to God's presence in Sunday worship is always a blessing. It's always a privilege. We come to find Him, but actually, He has already found us. And so we enjoy Him this morning as we worship Him, as we hear His Word, as we love one another in the body of Christ. So I invite everyone to stand. Let us begin our service. Church, let us confidently approach the Father's throne of grace, knowing that the way there has been opened through the perfect sacrifice, the perfect redemption of God the Son, Jesus Christ. And that this gospel truth, this gospel joy has been poured out into our hearts by God the Holy Spirit. So as you come to worship this morning, may the favor, the blessings, the peace, and the joy of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit be with us all. Amen. You may be seated, church. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our affliction so that we may be able to comfort those who are in any affliction with the comfort with which we ourselves are comforted by God. Now church, on this very morning, let's prepare ourselves to come in God's presence. When we are weak, He is our strength. He is our all in all. Let's praise this song together as we prepare our hearts for the service. let's bow our heads and let us take a moment 
to humble ourselves, to close our eyes and open our hearts. Let's take some time to introspect ourselves as we confess to God. Are we hurting? Are we grieving for the sins we have committed throughout the week? Are we struggling to shake off our sinful habits? Lay it all down to Jesus on this very moment. I'll give us all a moment of silence. Let's be united in prayer. Dear God, these are our sins, and we have opened them up to you. Because, Lord, we want to repent. We want to be transformed in you. And the only person that might understand the deepest, darkest sins and secrets in our hearts is only you. And Father, we pray that you're forgiving to us. And you mend and shape us to be more and more like you. So we can be satisfied only in contentment of you, Lord. As your word has reassured us in Psalm 103, 10 until 12, he does not deal with us according to our sins nor repay us according to our iniquities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his steadfast love toward those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far does he remove our transgressions from us. Thank you, Lord, for your words of grace and we pray today God for the congregation today 
the church of God to be able to come with humility into your presence today to be able to worship glorify and enjoy you entirely as we seek you for you have seeked and found us first thank you God may each and every one of us enjoy the service from the beginning to the end so that we may be able to bring that seed of gospel in our hearts and apply it in our lives to expand your kingdom and glorify you wholeheartedly for entire, our entire lives. Thank you, God. Thank you. In the name of Lord Jesus Christ, we pray and give thanks. Let's everybody say amen. Now, church, let us arise and let us declare our faith. We believe in God, the Father Lord Almighty, Almighty, the maker, maker of, of heaven, heaven and earth, earth of all, all things, things visible and invisible. And, invisible. and, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, Christ the only Son of God, God begotten from the Father before all ages, God from God, God light from light, light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of the same essence as the Father. Through him all things were made for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, he became incarnate by the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made human. He was crucified for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. The third day he rose again according to the scriptures. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again with glory to judge the living and the dead. His kingdom will never end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life. He proceeds from the Father and the Son. And with the Father and the Son is worship and glorified. He spoke through the prophets. We believe in one holy, universal, and apostolic church. We affirm one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look forward to the resurrection of the dead and to the life in the world to come. Amen. Why don't we say hi to our neighbor? Hi, everyone. And hi to those watching on live stream as well. God bless you and happy Sunday, everybody. Okay. Now, church. Let's praise God and always be reminded that even in these hard times, we still have hard times in our life, right? Right? We still have hard times. We still have a God that is very strong, stronger than each and every one of us. He is the strength of our hearts. Let's praise God. but you let's prepare ourselves and sing this together there's nothing on earth like jesus whom have i in heaven but you there is nothing on earth i desire beside you my heart and my strength times they fail but there is one true
the Lord. Now church, let's stay standing and let's always remember that God is the strength of our heart and nothing is impossible with Him. Amen? Amen. Come on church, let's clap our hands together. Yes. Let's praise the Lord together. Nothing is impossible. Through you, I can do anything. I can do all things. For it's you who gives me strength. Nothing is impossible. Through you, blind eyes are open. Strongholds are broken. down I know that you're here with me and I know that you can do anything through you through you I can do anything I can do all things for it's you who gives me strength nothing is impossible through you What I see, only Jesus. I'm not gonna live by what I see. I'm not gonna live by what I feel. I'm not gonna live by what I feel. Deep down, I know that you're here with me. And I know that you can do it. church let's prepare our hearts and our minds to receive the word of God and with all the struggles in our life let's be reminded that 
all satisfaction is only from Jesus. And everything that we have in our lives, let us surrender it wholeheartedly to Him. Let's prepare our hearts for the Word of God. get the Sunday school children and the teachers and you know, also the parents or the caretakers can I just really quickly pray for you hey hello Fania and Jason okay come 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 <laughs> okay let's pray Lord Jesus thank you so much for these children I pray that you they as they go to Sunday school they'll enjoy you they'll enjoy their class they'll enjoy their friends and uh, they'll get to know the God of love and the God of power. 
Pray for the teachers and the parents as well, God, as they accompany them so that they give them wisdom and compassion for today's lesson. Thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Off you go. All right. Thank you, everyone. Paper. Do you know that word, paper? <laughs> paper means, I mean, not, not means, paper is short for bawa prasaan, right? Like something like carry your feelings. You know, that's one of those, um, one of those sayings in Indonesian that basically meant how sometimes and often we take things personally, right? Some minor disturbance, let's say, uh, you got into traffic or you don't get what you order from Gojek or, you know, someone did not reply your text message or, you know, things went uh, someone is late, even though you have to be for the music practice, right? Uh, things like that, and then you overreact, right? Then you become paper, you know? And you suddenly is mad or, or vengeful or just basically someone that we don't want you to be around, you know? It's like one of those bad reactive uh, spirit, like, you know, you are spiteful and you don't handle things well. And I think... And that often happens as well, right, in, in our lives. We cannot stop things from happening to us. And many of them, or maybe some of them, are bad things. Things we don't like, things we don't expect, things we don't want. But then we react it poorly. A few weeks ago, I was on a flight back with my wife. And on the plane... I've always wanted to try to drink the wine. You see, it's like I mean, I mean, I, I paid for the for the trip, right? And then so uh, 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 once in a while, let, let, let me try the wine. I mean, I paid the full full trip, so the drinks are free, kind of, right? And so um, they offered uh, juice, uh, tea, uh, coke. Uh, you know, they never offered the wine. I don't know why, you know. And whenever they come to me, and then so uh, 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 so what do you want? Okay, I want this food and that food, and then can I get the wine, please? You know, uh, can I get the white wine? And then, and then the next thing happened, which made me very reactive. You know, I reacted poorly about this. You know what happened next? The guy, the steward man. No, what, what do you call that now? No, not the steward. Was it the flight attendant? Right, the flight attendant said, and this made me mad. He said, um, "Sir." Can I please see your ID? It's like, it's like, um, so it's like, uh, I was like, f froze like for a couple of seconds. It was like, uh, what? <laughs> no, no, I, I'm, I'm above 18. Really? <laughs> it's like, uh, this is my wife. I mean, I'm supposed to say that, but somehow just escaped to me. It's like, I reacted poorly, even though that's a good thing, right? So, so, so but sometimes we, we did that, right? We, we had this bad reaction to life happening to us. So let's, let's, let's look at this, like, you know, imagine, how do you react to any of the following situations? I mean, all of these are from real life, okay? All of these are from real life. How do you react to this? The people at work, the people at school don't like you. I mean, you know, they just use every opportunity to badmouth you, to kind of take you down, you know? How do you react when your in-laws hate you? I mean, I never agreed to this marriage, you know. And they try to interfere with your marriage. How do you re react whenever you open your phone, you see those scrolls in Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, whatever, and your high school friends, he's happy, he's successful, he's the CEO, and you're just... Your day-to-day -day life is just plain, mundane, and hard. How do you react when you suddenly find yourself unemployed? Suddenly find yourself unable to pay your debts? How do you react when suddenly the relationship is over and the wedding got canceled? How do you react when, when your spouse developed a severe handicap? How do you react when you find out that you cannot have children on your own? Can you react well? Because after all, I think spiritual maturity is gauged, 
is determined not just by what we do, but how we react. Not just by actions, but by our reactions. I think we can tell a lot about a person, right? By how they react. Not just by what they, how they act. Can we have a proper reaction? Have we developed a self-controlled life that is able to handle all things and react it and react in a way that is pleasing God and be a blessing to others? And I think the way to do that is for us to learn the secret of contentment, the secret of being able to say, things are hard, but I got this because God is with me. And that's what we're going to learn. Let's open our Bible to chap Philippians chapter 4 because that's where we end up last time in our exposition in the book of Philippians. Philippians 4, 10 to 13. Let me read to you and then we will pray one more time. Philippians 4, verse 10 until verse 13, 1, 3. This is Paul. I rejoice in the Lord greatly that now at length you have revived your concern for me. You were indeed concerned for me, but you had no opportunity. Not that I am speaking of being in need, for I have learned in whatever situation I am to be content. I know how to be brought low. I know how to abound. In any and every circumstance, I have learned the secret of facing plenty and hunger, abundance and need. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. Amen. Let's pray. God before us is your word. Your word is true. Your word is beautiful. Your word is transformative. Help us now to humble our hearts, open our lives, so that we can be comforted, challenged, guided by your holy voice. Father, I am weak and sinful preacher. Help me. Use me, God, as your instruments today, so your gospel can be clarified, highlighted, and be able to land in everyone's heart and life. Thank you. Bless this time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, guys, here's the setup. Paul, at this time of writing, he was in prison, right? And he was thrilled now because he said in the beginning in verse 10, I rejoice, right? He was thrilled because he got a renewed support. He got a care package, basically, uh, I think it's maybe it's money, maybe it's bread, maybe it's books. I don't know, but basically he got something of a help from the Philippians church. Finally, he said that you have revived your concern for me, right? So, and Paul says, I know that you were concerned for me, but you had no opportunity. So apparently, uh, Philippians church have been giving to Paul care packages, okay? But when he was in prison, the help stopped coming. There are many reasons. We don't know why. Maybe it's just, maybe, you know, it's difficult to get stuff to prison. Obviously, that's one thing, right? And basically, it's not that they don't want to, but they cannot give at the moment. But now, finally, Paul received a care package from the Philippian church. So Paul, I believe, he is super, super grateful. But if you notice verse 10, more carefully, it says, I rejoiced. In the Lord, see? He did not say, I rejoice in your gift. He did not even say, I rejoice in you guys. You are so kind and generous, so sacrificial, Church of Philippi. No, he rejoiced in the Lord. It's like very ungrateful might be, you know? I remember one time my grandma sent me a, a melon, say melon? <laughs> Some sort of a jokok bali. What is jokok bali? Grapefruit? Right? So one time my grandma sent me a grapefruit and somehow it just escaped my mind to say thank you to her. And then she was like, she complained to my mom. So it's like, <laughs> so it's like uh, uh, you know, Ma is, is heartbroken. See, Papa, right? Uh, but, but my mistake, you know, I'm supposed to say thank you. And you know, I, so is, is Paul here being ungrateful? I mean, he got the gift. I mean, he should have said something, right? He just said, thank you guys. Your guys are so awesome. God bless you. May God reward you, right? Something like that. But, but I think Paul's not being ungrateful. Paul here is grateful, but at the same time, he's using the moment to teach something. See, Paul was trying to teach this. He's basically saying this, guys, I am thankful for the gift. But you know what? My satisfaction did not depend on it. I am full, even though I looked empty. 
Do you see what I'm saying? I am rich even though I don't have any money. Paul was content. Content means satisfied, enough. Not content, content, yeah. <laughs> Not that, that content as in like a, a internet content, no. Content as in, you know, I am enough, I am okay, I am in control, everything is fine, I can do this. I am self-sufficient, basically. I am sufficient, maybe that's the kind of the word. But it makes us question our hearts right now, right? Are you in a level of Christian maturity in which you can remain completely in control of yourself Regardless of situations, apakah teman-teman di sini itu dalam keadaan yang betul-betul bisa mengendalikan hati di saat apapun? Or do we react poorly? One of the most hurtful, I think, sentence in the Bible is this: "And the women sang to one another as they celebrated." Saul has struck down his thousands and David has ten thousands. Know that, know that verse? Saul, wow, he defeated thousands. But David, he defeated ten thousands. How do you react? <laughs> you got this, but your best friend or your, your, your junior got a lot better. <laughs> and this is what the Bible says about Saul. And Saul was very angry. And this saying displeased him. And Saul eyed David from that day on. And you know what happened next, right? Because of that envy and jealousy of bad control, Saul went downhill and he lost the favor of God. So what about you? What about me? Can you still go towards your life Regardless of circumstances, can you still handle well whatever life throws at you? But this is, the, this is the beauty of contentment, right? The ability to handle well, not just handle it, but handle well. Or handle things in a godly way, whatever life throws at you. No wonder Paul said this about contentment. So, Godliness, kerohanian, spiritual maturity, right? With contentment is great gain. Paul is basically saying, guys, contentment, having that I am sufficient in Christ is a good goal of a Christian life. Contentment is not, oh, you always lie. You know, sometimes we think contentment like that, right? Contentment is just accepting whatever circumstances because I can't change about it. I'm just going to accept all things. I'm just, I'm passively resigned to my fate. That's not contentment. Contentment is something of a normative goal of the spiritual life. One Puritan said, contentment is the rare jewel of the Christian life. It, can you get that picture in your mind? A rare jewel. Jewel is already rare, right? Yeah, gak sih? Permata itu sudah langka, gitu loh. Ini permata yang langka lagi, you see? A rare jewel. It's one of a kind. It's unique. It's awesome. It's beautiful. It's influential. That means, guys, when we want to learn contentment, I don't want you to think that I'm trying to, t- oh, the Bible is trying to paint a message. Hey, just, just accept whatever things happening to you. It's God's will. It's okay. No. I don't want you to think like that. That's not contentment. Contentment is not a second-tiered Christian life. Contentment is not like God's plan B. Oh, you can't be as good as Him, so here is a plan B. No. Contentment is a vision of life that God wants for you. So how can we learn it? Three points, very quickly. First one. Contentment is not found in our circumstances. Obvious point, but it's in the Bible. So let's just go along with it, right? Okay. Contentment is not found in our circumstances. Verse 11 and 12, let me read to you again. Not that I am speaking of being in need. See, Paul again says, see, guys, uh, I'm not speaking I need it, but thank you, thank you. Do you see that? Not that I'm speaking of being in need, but I have learned in whatever situation to be content. I know how to be brought low. I know how to abound in in any and every circumstances, I have learned the secret of facing plenty, hunger, abundance, need, and I can do all things through Christ. You see, you see here that Paul is basically saying, guys, thank you for your gift, 
but it did not affect my contentment. Right? My contentment did not increase or decrease based on my material provision. Now, when the first readers of this letter, when they read the word, I learned to be content, I have learned the secret to be content, right? They will be reminded immediately of another philosophical school at that time very popular called Stoic, right? Stoicism. Stoa atau Stoic. Right, yeah, Stoic, right? right. So uh, it would have made the immediate thing about that philosophical school. For the Stoics, contentment was the king of all virtues. It's like a Stoic is someone who is content. I mean, like that's, that's who they are, right? And the word content itself means to be self-sufficient, not needing assistance from the outside. So is Paul teaching this kind of Stoicism? Is that, is that, who he, is that what he's trying to do? But let me, let, me, let me reroute you guys to this story. Any of you have heard the name of Bernie uh, Ecclestone? You know, that purple dinosaur. Oh, no, that's Barney. Sorry. <laughs> this is Ber <laughs> Bernie, okay? Bernie Ecclestone. Bernie Ecclestone is this rich businessman. He is the founder and owner of Formula One. Okay? So rich, rich guy. Powerful guy. One day, he was walking in London. And he got mocked. He got, you know, someone, a bunch of guys surrounded him, beat him up, okay, and took everything that belongs to him, including one very expensive watch uh, by the name, of the, the, the brand name is Hublot, Hublot, I don't know how to pronounce it, I'm, I'm sorry, H-U-B-L-O-T, is it, anybody own the watch? Maybe you want to donate to the church? No, uh, hub, hub, let's say let's let's say Hublot. Okay, Hublot. Um, it and and it's reportedly to cost around four billion rupiah. Okay, so a, can you imagine that a watch empat miliar. Okay, and got stolen. Now, if you were Bernie, what will you do? I mean, the guy, you, you are basically you know uh, uh, beaten up by a bunch of. Guys, what will you do? Maybe, if you are rich and powerful, probably, you know, I'm just going to immediately call the police, hire a detective. If need be, I will hire James Bond, you know, because he's in London, right? Find the guy. I mean, I mean, hunt him down. Put him in prison. Find the family. Make them poor. <laughs> you know, just basically just do it, right? You just, just lash out, right? I mean, come on, you're Bernie. You own Formula One. The guy just robbed you. Clean. You get it, you know, this is not just something about money, it's my honor, right? Things like that. I mean, that's what powerful people can do. So you don't mess with powerful people, right? Or if you are if it happened to you and or me, like just we are just rakyat jelata, you know, we're just normal citizens, probably we'll just be traumatized, right? We'll be angry, sad, scared, worried. Uh, next time is someone gonna you know rob me on the street. Do you know what Bernie ended up doing? When he got beaten up, all his belongings, you know, just robbed away. He asked someone on the street, hey, can you take a picture of me? His, his basically, you know, a uh, beaten up face. And then he got, uh, the, his picture was taken and he sent his beaten up face to the CEO of Hublot, okay, Jean-Claude Biver. And with a, with a, with a message on, on, his ma on, on, the, on, the, on the picture, see what people will do for a hublot. You get what I'm saying? See, this is what people will willing to do to beat me up to get this expensive watch. You know what happened next? When the CEO read that, these two men think about this is an opportunity. They ended up using that beaten up picture to be an ad. jadikan <laughs> iklan. To be an ad. To sell the watch. So they will put Bernie's face, original, no uh, digital reconstruction, okay, Re reconstruction, and the watch. You know what happened next? When they put that on the, on the on newspaper, or I don't know what, the sales of Hublot skyrocketed. And Hublot becomes the, the watch of Formula One. The two men ended up getting benefit, earned a lot of money from that incident. 
This is the power of businessmen, right? <laughs> Memang dasar pengusaha gitu kan. Tingginya cuan-cuan-cuan aja gitu kan. But here you can see, right? This is kind of one of those examples, real life examples of contentment. Like, okay, I got beaten up. What can I make something? Can I make something out of this? These two gentlemen, they made a lot of money because of that one horrifying experience. But the difference with us is this, guys. We might not be Bernie, but we have Jesus in our lives. With, with this, what the Stoic is trying to do is that they will, they, will, they, will, they will say to you, hey, you want to be content? Get rid of all emotions so that you can think rationally. Calm down, right? But Christians, we don't teach that. We teach, no, no, no. We don't get rid of emotions. Emotions are not the bad guys. We embrace our emotions. And we don't trust our logic. We trust the word of God. Because we know our logic can be faulty too. We cannot think rationally. Even if you try to get rid of all your emotions, your rational thoughts will always be influenced by the world, right? No. We embrace our emotions and we trust the word of God. We look wisdom, not, with, not from our own thoughts, but from God's thoughts that is communicated through the Bible, see? Because we don't deny pain, right? Christians don't teach Christianity does not teach to deny pain. We might complain. It's okay to complain, but we complain with God and not about God. Now, both the Stoic and the Christians, they, they might look inward, okay? They find this energy, this, 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 okay? Self-control, inward, right? Because they don't look at circumstances, they look inward. But when the Stoic, they try to look inward, what do they find? They find just this inner strength, right? This impersonal force. But when we, Believers in Jesus Christ, when we look inward, what do we find? We find the loving voice of the Father. We find the warmth of the Spirit, right? The personal warmth of our God, knowing what we need and supplying what we need. Stoic, they might be able to give you peace in difficult moments in this world, but they can never give you the hope and the assurance of the world to come, right? They might be able to say, it's okay, things will be all right. But they can't really say that. We can say that. It will be all right because Jesus has won. There will be a final judgment. He will come back again. And, there, and when he came back again, there will be a final rest and a total justice beyond the pain and suffering of our world. See? So, with regards to circumstance, this is what we need to do, I think. In this, in this first point, we need to, at the end of the day, we cannot control what happens to us. So we need to accept the reality that we live in a fallen world. We need to accept that. See, sometimes it's funny, right? We demand the perfect life, but we don't live a perfect life. We don't live a perfect life. Do you see what I'm saying? Kita menuntut kehidupan sempurna, tapi hidup kita loh belum sempurna, gitu ya. We want people to treat us well, but we don't treat people well. <laughs> So we, we have to accept, you know, we live in a fallen world and God does not owe us blessing. God does not owe us comfort. In fact, it's the opposite. We are sinners. Sinners don't make demands. Just like criminals don't make demands. I mean, you are criminals. You, 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 you shut up, basically, right? But by the grace of God, he pardoned us. See, I guess what it means maybe is this, and this is going to be a difficult sentence for some of you, here you go. At the end of the day, it means there are trials which we cannot change into blessings. There are burdens which we cannot lay down. There are crosses which we must continue to carry. And there are thorns into, in the flesh which, we, which must remain with the persistent, persistent pain. See? Sometimes not all of our problems will go away, right? Like, 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 like Paul said, God, please remove this thorn, right? Tuhan, uh, jauhkan duri ini dari aku. Tapi Tuhan bilang, enggak. Anugerah aku cukup. Well, my grace is sufficient for you, right? See, sometimes, I don't know what, sometimes maybe in your life, there are some things that you cannot change. I mean, you pray, you, you fast, you, you, know, you ask people for help, but that problem persists. And maybe 
it will persist until the day you die. Maybe, I don't know. Or maybe that's someone that you don't like. Or maybe that's someone that makes you suffer, they'll die. <laughs> but here's the promise. Even so, God's plan will not let us down. I don't know what kind of crosses that you bear right now. And I don't know how long you have to carry that cross. Maybe five years. Maybe five minutes. Maybe 10 years. Maybe 10 months. Or even maybe your whole life, you're going to have to carry that cross. Because Jesus said, you're going to carry that cross your whole life. Even so, even so, God's plan is always the best. You trust Him and accept. That's the first one. Contentment is not connected to circumstances. Secondly, contentment is learned. Notice how um, the repetition, that's one of the things when you learn the Bible, is to notice the repetitions, okay? It's one of the simplest and very helpful. Verse 11 to 12 says twice, in whatever situation I, I have learned to be content, I know, right? I know how to be brought low. I know how to abound. I have learned the secret, see? Contentment, therefore, wasn't magically zapped into his heart. Paul had to learn through many experiences, right? I mean, and, and, and we know how, how, how Paul suffered, right? We, we know that he suffered uh, shipwreck, torture, imprisonment, persecution, church conflict, rejection. He really knew how to brought be to how to be brought low, how to be poor, and things like that. But at the same time, we know Paul also experienced comfort and joy and blessings. For example, in Acts 16, he stayed in the house of a wealthy Christian by the name of Lydia. You know, I mean, I, I believe, or at least I imagine Paul must have had all the fine dining, or at least, you know, uh, 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 good food, uh, good people, just meet with important people in the city, Things like that. But basically, Paul is using these extremes, high and low, abound and uh, poverty, to tell us there's a challenge that comes with each position. And you've got to learn it. See, but first of all, I want to say this. I have learned means that it's not just like, okay, I learned from a book, or I learned from a textbook, or I learned from a, you know, like a, like a former school type. I have learned means to... Learn from experience, from practice, and then you carry some reflection from there. But what is interesting, if, let me try to uh, flash this out, okay? Learn, what does it mean to, to, to learn contentment? Let me try to put some details so that we can, we can practice it, okay? So uh, in the Greek, there is a significant personal emphasis. There's a significant personal emphasis. In the original Greek, it says like this, he himself learned that he himself must be content. That's kind of the, the, uh, the proper sentence, right? He himself learned that he himself must be content. So it's like saying, no one can do this but Paul, and no one can learn contentment but you. You have to, you have to be intentional. You have to make an effort to learn, inten uh, to learn contentment. Okay. Um, okay, how does this help me? Let me, let me give you one simple illustration. Um, this might be a cliche. Just disclaimer, okay? This might be a cliche. It might be a bit st stereotypical, but bear with me, okay? I think every woman has had the following conversation with a man, especially with a husband, who is standing by an open fridge, you know? Like an kolkas, you know? Imagine, you know, let's say a hus husband's here. You, know, you open the fridge and you say, hey, where did you put the butter, right? And then your wife said, in the fridge. Where? I can't see it. I put there 10 minutes ago. No, it's not here. You must have put it somewhere else. It's definitely not here. You know, you know how we guys, we can look at something and we can't find it, right? <laughs> we scan and uh, no, it's not here. Where's the butter? And then you, no, it's not here. I cannot find the butter in the fridge. And then suddenly your wife comes and then she just puts her hand inside the fridge without even looking. And then pop up, comes out, a eh? butter. It's like, whoa, my wife just made a magic trick. Or whoa, you know, like 
she created something out of nothing. <laughs> It's like, you know, you know, does that happen to you? I mean, guys, you know, uh, wives and husbands, like, like somehow women is, they say, they are better at finding things. Like, you know, like, you know, sometimes when you have a, like, you know, can't, we guys, we can't find our socks, we can't find our keys, we can't find our, our wallet. But then we say, where is it? I can't, it's not here. Itu <laughs> right? Over there, you see? And, 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 and that's quite interesting sometimes, but... And then, and then sometimes women sometimes feel that this is a trick to drive them mad, or women think men play dumb d- deliberately and just try to, you know, <laughs> try to uh, make a fool of the wife. But the point is, you know, um, uh, and then ironically, sometimes they say women, men cannot find the keys, but women cannot read the map. So anyway, it's just kind of balanced out. But see, uh, the, the, the lesson with that is that to find something, we have to really look for it. I mean, that's like a cliche. But here's the thing, you know, sometimes about, you know, about good things, we need to adopt this kind of mindset of, a, of a, like a hunter, you know. We hunt down goodness and beauty. Because you know what? Just like when we try to find the all things, just like we guys, we cannot find it. We see all the things in the fridge, but we don't find the one thing that we want. It's the same. We see all the bad things in our lives, you see. We notice bad things first, right? We notice the traffic first, the bad grades first. We notice the bad words first. We notice the brokenness, the suffering. The, and if you go to the restaurant, you, know, you look at the, not the, 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 you look at the price first, not the, <laughs> the menu first, you see what I'm saying? Oh, kalau murah itu enak, gitu. You see? We, we notice the bad things first. In order to find the good, we have to, hey, itu lo, this itu lo. Over there, we have to look at it, see? We have to find it. We have to purposely want it. With the bad things in our lives, we don't have to want it. It comes to us like a automatic. We are hardwired to notice bad things. But with the good things in life, we need to want it. We need to hunt it down. We need to be able to say, despite all the bad things happening to me right now, I have a problem in my work. I have a problem with my in-laws. I have a problem at school. I have a problem at church. I have a problem with my bank. I don't know. Despite all of it all, there's a goodness there. God is still blessing me with A, B, C, D, E. You see what I'm saying? We need, we learn contentment by, by hunting down the goodness and the beauty that God has given to us. Because I believe, guys, God will never not give us a blessing. Pasti ada berkat setiap hari. Amin gak sih? There must be God's blessing every day. There must be. But you need to hunt it down. And secondly, how we learn about this. Is Paul here said, right, he, they, you know, he, he learned contentment through, he kept back and f- going back and forth, right? Plenty, hunger, um, abundance, need. Paul is saying this, you know, in both of the situations, I learned to be content. It's interesting, right? I thought we must learn to be content only in times of need, right? But Paul said, no, no, no. I know how to be content, not just when I lack food and money. I also learn to be content when I have a lot of money and a lot of food, <laughs> basically, right? John Calvin believe that you know what being content when you have a lot takes even more dependence on Christ than being content when you have nothing basically Calvin is saying being content when you when you have a lot is more is more difficult because we have a lot right you don't need to rely on Christ anymore you see so basically he's saying be careful be careful because you don't know the whole story. Sometimes we want other people's life, right? We want, we, we, we want other people's life. The single, we look at the married people. Oh, it's so good. We want to be married, right? We have someone so that every time I go on weekends, I have someone to, you know, hold my hands. So, you know, if you need someone to hold your hands, just get a dog, right? <laughs> you know, and those, but then you ask that they're married and they say, oh, we want to be single again. You don't know what I'm handling with at home, you know? Those who are, uh, who, who is in school? 
Ah, I really want to work. I want to get out of this. I don't want to do homework anymore. I don't like to take exams anymore. I'm tired of this. All the school work. I want to be uh, like that Coco or that Cece because she, he's, in, he's, in, he's in the workplace. And you ask the, the one working, you don't know what I'm facing. I have to face traffic. I have to face angry bosses. You know, I don't get bonus, you know. <laughs> See? See, you don't know. Maybe some of you, oh, it's so good to see someone who has their own business. I don't have to, you know, it's like they earn so much money when they, have their, they can be their own bosses, right? So, so successful. I want to be, I don't want to work in an office. I don't want to be an employee. Uh, em- employee. I want to be an employer. I want to be the boss. But you ask them, you don't know. If you are a worker, after you, after you, after you finish your hour, work, working hours, 5 p.m., let's say, you go home, you don't carry your work with you, right? It's okay, I'm done for the day. I can eat, drink, have fun. But you ask the bosses. You ask the business owners. No, there is no working hours for them. 24-7, 36, 5, yeah, right? You think all the time about the work. You think about how to pay your uh, employer, employee, uh, Employees, employers, right? Employees, you, you think about how to pay the debts. You think about a lot of things you to think about. Don't forget. See, it's like a tree, you know? Imagine a forest and you have one giant tree. You know what happened to that giant tree? Number one, the higher you are, the more visible you are. People are going to see you, right? And number, uh, n- number two, the higher you are, the wind is stronger. And number three, the higher you are, the more scary when you fall, see? So you don't know. So maybe if you know how other people's life, no matter how amazing they look to you, maybe if you know, you will not want to exchange your life for theirs. You don't know. And so, I guess what I'm saying to you is this. There is a lesson and blessing in every season, wherever you are. There's a lesson. If you are not at the place that you want to be, there's a lesson in there. If you are in a season of need, if you are in a season of poverty, maybe that means God wants you to learn humility. God wants you to learn uh, patience and trust. There's a lesson and a blessing in every season. If you're single here, um, don't wait around and wonder, when is God going to bless me? Or let me change it. If you are poor here, I don't want to say that. If you, are, if you lack money, if you... Don't get promoted if you, uh, you don't get the child that you have been wanting for. If you don't get all the prayers, don't sit around and wonder, when is God going to bless me? You might find it hard to believe, but God is blessing you. I guess what I'm saying is, you don't have to wait until you are married. You don't have to wait until you have a certain amount of income. You don't have to wait until your, all the dreams come true to start your life. God, get going with Get going with what God is doing. Get going with what God is doing. And when God gives you what you want, the singles, let's say, I'm going to use a single because it's just an easy example. If you are called to be single, God will sustain you. But, and then if God does bring along that person, he won't do it because you are so obsessed about her or about him, but because you focus on what God is doing, you see? And in the end, guys, let's, um, let's really arrange our desire, our hope. That's how we learn. So we, we see that we need, to be, we need to hunt the goodness. That's how we learn. Second, how we learn, we, we, uh, uh, we know that every season has blessing and lesson. And finally, we learn to rearrange our desire, rearrange our hope. You know, Paul said, if I have to borrow 1 Timothy 6, Paul said, having food and clothing, let us be content with this. Punya makanan, punya pakaian, sudah cukup bagiku, kata Paulus. So we need to rearrange, menata hati, menata harapan, menata keinginan kita. Because I think very much of our discontent arises from envy of those who seem to be more favored than ourselves, right? Do you know one of those people? And then you see, you know, oh, I wish I'm born in that family. Oh, I wish I'm born with that that capacity to think like that. Oh, I wish I'm born to have all of these achievements. And have you ever, have you ever had holy envy as well? Like, like you envy people who are holier than you? It's like, like this, you know, you know one of those people who is like, who, wins spirit, who, who can win spiritual battles so easily, you know? 
is like, okay, when he pray, when he start to learn how to pray, I mean, he's just on fire all the time. He goes from leaps, he goes from leaps and bounce. He's just like, woof, you know. Me, I learned to pray. I, 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 I proceed one step, but I went back five steps. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, you know, I, I learned to uh, kill this sin. It works for a moment, but then I'm, I struggle with my sin again. Is it like back and forth? Like, so I'm, I progress in my spiritual life so slow, like a turtle, you know? But that guy, he just pray one time, <laughs> just read the Bible. Now he's a pastor. I mean, you know, like, you know? Have you ever had like that, that kind of envy? Kok bisa ya? Orang itu rohani cepat gitu loh. Saya mau baca Alkitab aja mau mati. <laughs> See? Saya kira, wow, I wish I had his, his spiritual stamina gitu. I wish I, aku bisa punya prestasi rohani seperti dia. Pernah gak sih? See, but I want to say that. And, and moreover, our, our society has this checklist, right? And not only that, we, we envy people who think we have been shortchanged, you know, they, they got a better better life, you know. Moreover, our society has that checklist, you know. Like, you are this far along in life, therefore, you should have achieved these things. You see what I'm saying? Like, okay, oh, how old are you? 20? Oh, you have, I mean, 25? Oh, you should be married. So if you're not 25 and married, somehow you're less than a person or something, you know. How old are you? Oh, uh, 30. How much in your bank account? So-so. Oh, 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 you are a failure. You see? There's a, society has that expectation, right? If you are by this, you have that degree, if you have that house, you have, you know, uh, where do you graduate again from this school? Oh, oh, you must be successful. No, I still live with my parents. See? Like, and people look at you funny, right? But here's what I'm saying. By God's grace, our self-worth and our meaning is not determined by all of those things. It's determined by God. He loves us. He accepts us. We are his children. And please, comparison is always a losing game. It's always a losing game. And stop obsessing over alternate reality. You know, sometimes we obsess, oh, if, I'm, if I marry him, if I marry her, my love will be better. <laughs> if, if only I, 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 I said yes to that job offer, I think I will, be, I will have more money now. Oh, if only I go to that church. <laughs> If only I, I, I go to that school, maybe today I'm not, I'm not miserable like this, you see? And we live in the fantasy land every day, you know? Wondering life would be better if only. No. Just love God and get to work, <laughs> okay? Rearrange your desires. Rearrange your hopes. It's okay. Okay, Lord, I don't get what I need. I'm, sorry, I don't get what I want. People, I think, have it more than I more than I. More than I I expect it's okay. I trust you, Lord. Maybe, maybe you don't want me to do this anymore. Maybe I need to adjust my vocation. Maybe I need to uh, uh, decrease something else. You know, rearrange, rearrange. Ayo menata hatimu, menata harapanmu, and trust that God knows best. And finally, ooh, last one. So contentment, contentment does not depend on circumstance. It has to be learned. And finally, it flows from union. With Christ. Verse 13, very famous verse. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Who strengthens me. And by the way, this I can do all things. Um, this verse is often abused, okay? It's often abused. It's like, say, it's, this, this, this verse is a, a favorite verse for many, many athletes, you know? Athletes like this verse. Oh, I can do this. I can win the... Uh, Champions League, I can win the World Cup, I can win the Hall of Fame, I can, you know, win the PGA, whatever, you know. I can win the Wimbledon, all, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Um, often they mean well. I don't question their motive. I just question their exegesis, you know. I just, I just question their interpretation, you know. Because that doesn't mean like that. I can do, it doesn't mean I can do everything I want. It doesn't mean that Christians can do anything they want because I know Jesus, so I can do all things. Yeah, try saying that to, to someone who is blind and just, hey, can you see this? I can't pray harder. Of course not, right? Unless a miracle happened and that's maybe I look like a fool. But, you know, this verse is not saying that. This verse is saying this, basically. I can do all this. Meaning, you know, facing plenty, facing 
facing uh, poverty, facing abundance, facing you know lack, a lack of supply. I can do all of this, not I can do all things. I think it's more accurate to say I can do this because Christ strengthens me. Maybe we should change do all things to I can endure all things. See, at the core, therefore, is, is we have this, we must have this deep satisfaction in, in Christ, right? Paul can be content because, because Christ meant so much for him. And when we are satisfied in Jesus Christ, we can be satisfied in what he gives. Let me repeat that. When we are satisfied with Christ, we can be satisfied with what he gives. We must trust that having Jesus is better than all the things we think we want. Because Jesus, he has done something for us that no one would do. This is what Jesus did for you. Jesus, and I want you to slow down with this sentence. Jesus traded his life, traded, not just gave. I'm going to explain this. Jesus traded his life for the life of not just undeserved people, he traded his life for the life of hell-deserving sinners. Do you see the difference there? You see the small but very, I think, significant. Jesus gave his life. Trade means my life I give to you, a life of blessing, abundance, forgiveness, joy, acceptance. I give to you hell-deserving sinners and your life of wrath, uh, 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 justice, and all that, you give it to me. Do you see? That's what Jesus did for you. We, we deserve wrath, but we get forgiveness. We deserve rejection and separation, but we get love and acceptance. We deserve punishment, but we get favor. We deserve shame, but we get honor. We deserve death, but we get life. Oh, what a glorious gospel that we have. Amen? So I hope that can elevate your love. I hope that can quench your thirst and see Christ as your sufficient all. And, 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 and I like at the end, so at the end when it says, I can do all things through him who strengthens me. God strengthens me. And when, when, when I read that, you know, I, I think of some, sometimes when, have we, have, when, when we have people, uh, our friends, our family who are, who are down and sad, they don't know what to do with their exam or their debt or their problems. And, and we, have, we are compelled to say something, right? You know, one of the things, like, it's okay, it's going to be okay. You can do this. You are strong, you know? Have you ever gave out that kind of advice to people who are sad, right? You, you, you try to what? Encourage them, right? But maybe you know, you say those words because you don't know what to say. <laughs> I mean, it's like, it's like, I need to say something, you know? I, I need to say something positive. And it's not wrong. But we know maybe that that words doesn't have any real power, right? We, we, we say because we want to encourage people. But this one, when it says, strengthens. This is not just an empty talk. This is not just a motiv motivational speech to get you inspired. This is not just a pep sentimental saying. This is the word of God. And when strengthens at least, and this is my last slide, at least it means this. It means that Christ gives us the power to stop complaining and gives us the deep faith to keep honoring God in difficult circumstances. Now, let me say this. I know this statement is not a sexy message, okay? <laughs> I know. Like, so what do, you learn to do, what do you learn at church today? Stop complaining, okay? I know that's not a sexy message, right? I'm not, I did not just give you a, like a mind-blowing, insightful spiritual pearls from heaven. I know. But that's what the text said. I don't care because I need to preach the Bible and this so I think what is the, the implication of that. It's not sexy, it's simple, but if you can, if we can appropriate this, if we can do it, if we experience this, I bet it's going to be a game changer in your life. I think it will be a game changer, right? It means this, whatever situations that happen to you, you can still obey God. That's what it means, basically, right? I mean, it, it, when things come to you, 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 you don't complain, you can 
curhat. What is curhat? You can share your story. You can, you can, you can, you know, ask for advice, but you don't complain. Curhat boleh, jangan komplain, gitu maksudnya. Right? That's the, the difference. If you have to complain, you don't complain with people. You take it to God. But you can stop complaining, and you can have the deep faith to keep honoring God. It's like God has made His power available so that I can do what honors Him in any situation. You can say, I don't like what's happening to me, right? You might prefer something else. Your emotions might be unstable. You, 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 might, be, you might be still you know, having all of those shame, anger, fear. But in the end, you can still honor Him. And I want to close with this illustration. You know the difference between a thermometer and a thermostat? You know, this is a quite famous, I think, common illustration. A thermometer basically just, you know, tells you uh, how hot or how cold this is, right? So if it's uh, uh, 30, uh, 20, and it will register. So uh, term a thermometer will follow uh, the, 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 the temperature outside, right? So sometimes we can be like that, you know? I'm a thermometer. So if it's hot, I'm going to be hot too. <laughs> like, okay, let's fight, right? But if, if it's cold, I'm getting cold too. Okay, it's okay. Let's just go along with the flow, you see? I am influenced by my circumstance. That's a thermometer. But we want to be a thermostat. You know what ther thermostat? Thermostat adjusts the temperature, okay? I want this room to have 25 degrees. I don't care. So let's say the room goes like, you know, 30 Immediately, the thermostat will turn on the AC, right? And it will adjust, adjust the surrounding to become 25. The thermostat determines the situation. If it's too hot, it will give more cold. If it's too cold, it will decrease the cold and give more heat, right? So here, basically, Christ gives us the strength not to be a thermometer, always influenced by the world. Christ gives us the strength to be a thermostat, to become an influence to the world. Do you see the difference? Kita tidak dipengaruhi kayak termometer, ngikut aja, tapi kita jadi thermostat, mempengaruhi. Karena Kristus yang menguatkan kita. No problem is greater than our God. No struggle is greater than our God. No suffering, no darkness can break our relationship with God. He has redeemed us. Amen. Let's pray. Um, Lord Jesus, we come to you. We bow down and trust you, Lord. And we want to reflect a moment with, with, with from the word of God. We ask for your forgiveness, Lord, if we live in a way that is discontent and we always try to obsess over a life of more, a life of, of having, having more or just better. Help us to be content. Help us to find your calling even when it's difficult. And help me, Lord, to love you and love others when things get difficult so that we can keep honoring you in all circumstances. Thank you. May this word today uh, inspire and comfort us, guide us, to become more like your son. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, church, to respond to the word of God, let us give the offering. As usual, the offering can be done two ways through the church bank account or the QR code in front or physically in the offering bags in the back there. And while uh, everyone is doing the offering, maybe we can see the announcements also. Hello everyone. Welcome to Reform Exodus Community. This is our church, this is our home. We would like to extend our warmest welcome to you, especially if this is your first time joining us. If you like to get connected with us, 
or you need someone to pray for you, please don't hesitate to call these numbers. Come and join our online morning prayer every Saturday at 5.30 a.m. Use the link here to get the Zoom link and other information. Come and join our discipleship group. We have one in each our local church. Please take a note of the day and time. Let's keep supporting one another and growing together during this hard time. That's all for our weekly announcement. Let's us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for He who promised is faithful. God bless you and see you next week. <laughs> and also, uh, good morning again for those who are watching at YouTube. I'm glad to see all of you, my brothers and sisters uh, of Greg Darmo. I didn't see any new faces, so I'm um, just gonna, uh, well, yeah, <laughs> usually there's someone new, I'm gonna say welcome, things like that, but yeah, by the way, guys, if you see someone new every time on Sunday, I do encourage you to, you know, welcome them as in, like, talk to them and invite them to get some snacks and give them the coffee and things like that, okay, uh, just to show them that we care about them, and thank you guys for those who are the volunteers today, uh, personal worship team and the Sunday school teachers as well. Um, Today, Pastor Willie is not with us. He uh, he's with his parents because uh, he has just uh, graduated from Saat. We uh, I just came back from his um, uh, commencement graduation. Sorry, uh, yeah, roughly the same uh, on Friday. So he he was here in the first service, Indonesian service, with his family, but he had to uh, drop them off at the airport. I think because uh, his family is not from around Surabaya. So um, he sends his regards. So maybe. Uh, just to let you, you know that he is just graduated and we are so uh, happy for him as well. Uh, we'll give you some uh, highlights before we close. Uh, this is the end of the, this is our last Sunday in June. Next week is July and in the few, um, in a few weeks we'll go to our um, anniversary, okay? So uh, our 30th anniversary will be on the 23rd of July. Uh, please mark your the, the, your calendar. We will have the hut ibadah haute rek di gereja ini. We'll be having here. Uh, so it will be a simultaneous service in all of the local church, local campus. Sorry, of all the campuses. You know. Um, so rek darmo mer batam kutisari inden. Uh, same time, different places, okay? So we'll celebrate together. Uh, it's on a Saturday night uh, from 6 to 9. We'll begin with dinner and then we'll, you know, uh, go with the celebration. So I hope you will come. And one of the things that you can support 
uh, besides coming and joining our worship is by uh, you know buying our t-shirts uh, ada kaosnya nih Bapak Ibu ya yeah. uh, putih dan hitam so uh, cool it's cool uh, take the leap I, I've bought one so uh, so there you go you can support us with uh, providing yourself or your family or your friends or your colleagues or someone you met at the, at, at work I don't know <laughs> you know because I think I think the the, the I think for, I, what I like I mean, I like all the t-shirts that we have, but one of the things that I like about this one is that the the saying is quite uh, quite general. Take the leap, right? Step out of your comfort zone. So I think it's not overtly Christian, you know. Maybe some of you might be, might not be comfortable if you have like Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. I mean, like oh, right? But this one is quite general, you know. So I think you might consider to have for yourself, you know, for for your own collection. So and also at the same time, you can support the church. Okay, so you can contact Bulinda. Uh, or if not, you can find me and I'll give you her number. Either way, uh, the t-shirt is available to order right now. Okay. Secondly, I need to remind you again, next Saturday, we will celebrate uh, the wedding. Well, we will have the wedding. and But the, the yeah, uh, the wedding celebration, uh, the holy matrimony of Michael and Karina. Okay. Uh, I, to, I, as a representative of Reg, I have I'm kind of need to remind you that if any of you have some kind of know some kind of a super serious issue on, on why they should not be married, please let me know. This is your time. If there's any hidden access or I don't know <laughs> some uh, questionable background from Michael and Karina, if you, you know and that you know that I don't know, and if you think that might you know have some disastrous result in their uh, marriage, please let me know. If not. I think it will be safe to say that next Saturday we will, you know, celebrate their union in marriage uh, and uh, forgive forgive them that they are unable to invite everyone. They are still under the uh, COVID-19 protocol, so the holy matrimony will not be open for public. But they will send you guys the electronic uh, invitation, and you can you can you know join us together online. Um, and and at the same time, I also need to inform you about their situation. We are so grateful and happy that they are united in marriage. But after the ceremony, or at least a few days after that, they will have to move to Jakarta. Okay, uh, Michael has got a new job, and Karina also because obviously she just got married. And if your husband in Jakarta and then she stayed in Surabaya, that's not good, right? So by the by the grace of God, Karina also got a job uh, in Jakarta, and so they will be moving. We are happy for them. At the same time, we are kind of, we are, I'm quite sad because so I'm losing, you know, saying goodbye to uh, our uh, close friends and you know faithful uh, uh, servants here as well, volunteers. I mean, and but we want the best for them, and I think it's just the, the season in their life. You know, we don't is out of it out of anybody's control, but God has the best plan for them. So. There you go with uh, Michael and Karina. Uh, we want to bless them, we want to pray for them, we want to support them. Okay, but I think they have plans to come back to Surabaya in the future. We don't know when. Okay, so because uh, I think their their family and their house is here. But anyway, that's kind of the news. So I think that's all for me. Uh, let's let, let me close our worship service this morning, and I'll, I'll give you some information afterwards. Okay, let's all stand. Let's see. Let's let's sing our solo together. Thank you so much for the opportunity to worship you, to listen to your words, and to give. Bless this offering, O oh God, so that it can help people in need, it can build your kingdom, and it can train our hearts to be generous givers. 
Lord, before we go, we just want to lift up a few prayers to you, Lord. We pray as we come into the middle of the year, and we know in less than two years' time, we're going to have to vote again. The election, uh, the presidential election 2024 is coming up. So we pray, God, for uh, the process of election from now on. We pray for our leaders, our um, uh, government uh, installation to prepare this election well so that those who are chosen by the people truly represent the, the, the heart and the benefit to, to benefit the people and not for their own personal agenda. Bless our next leaders, sustain our country, help us to grow and to move forward to the right direction and help and, and, and empower your church, Lord, to, uh, to speak up, to be the voice uh, of this nation's conscience, to lead the way towards goodness and truth and beauty. So bless uh, our election progress from now on until 2024 so that the new president, new vice president, and all the new ministers as well to really serve the country and to have a heart that fears the Lord. Thank you, Lord. We trust our nation to you. Lord, we're also praying for our um, kids, our teens, uh, those uh, who are at school, our students in this uh, in, uh, in our church, God, as they go into this long holiday, summer break, we pray, God, that they can continue to be able to make, uh, make the best out of it, to focus on uh, godly activities, to uh, 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 fill their minds with, with truth and, 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 and goodness so that, that they can grow up to be men and women who loves you and fears you. Bless, uh, we also pray for our teachers and, and school officials as they plan for the new academic year uh, so that they can, especially maybe they have to meet again, you know, uh, face-to-face uh, learning. Uh, God help them so that they'll be able to come up with policies and rules, regulations to benefit everyone, to increase the uh, learning capacities, potential and goals, and to see how we use our uh, especially some of our members who are school officials and teachers, use them, Lord, and guide them uh, so that they can be a blessing in their workplace. Thank you, God. This is what we pray. And finally, we want to pray for everyone in this room. We bring our own struggles and fear and doubts and uh, worries about the future. We bring our envy and we bring our uh, suffering to you, Lord. We know that we have a God who can strengthen us so that we can endure, we can win, we can... Uh, uh, overcome all the challenges that lies before us. Thank you, Lord. We trust you. And we know that you are with us and you are for us. Now, church, before you go, it's time now to receive the benediction. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the fellowship of God the Holy Spirit be with us all from now on till forever and forever more. Amen. Amen. You may be seated, church. The service is over. Happy Sunday and God bless you.